Hello and welcome to this week's Glass Tire Top 5. It is the week of what? Is it April 18th, 2019? Mm -hmm. I'm Christina Reese. I am Neil Farso. And uh, we're counting down the top five art events in Texas this week. I'm in Dallas for just another hot second before I hit the road again. I keep leaving. And you're in San Antonio, aren't you? Yes, I'm in San Antonio. At number five is Olive Ayans at uh, Solid DS. And this is an interesting show. It's guest curated by Hill Snyder, who's a friend of Glass Tire as a contributor and also an artist himself and musician, etc. And Olive is someone that Hills met at UCross Fellowship in Wyoming a few years ago when Hills did that. And apparently, to all artists and creative people out there, that's a fantastic fellowship and really amazing experience, so you might want to look into that. But Olive is a New York-based artist. He's been working for um, a long time, and this is a collection of very beautiful, surreal watercolors spanning from the late 80s up until more recently. And um, she did things like when there was a uh, renovation of Grand Central Station, the city of New York did an uh, uh, open call to artists to render, you know, the majesty of Grand Central Station. So there's a poster for that included in the show, which is interesting. But the actual watercolors are really great. And um, it's kind of a rare thing for a gallery like Salah Diaz to do an artist from New York that's, you know, so it's it's a kind of a special show for Salah Diaz. And on this Saturday, there's going to be a performance by Christy Blizzard at Salah Diaz that I think is unrelated to the current show. But that's kind of a good uh, two for one to see that show and then see the Christy Blizzard performance, which I'm sure will be uh, properly twisted and um, interesting. So. All right, so number four this week is Mark Ponder. He's at G Spot in Houston. Mark Ponder is a Houston based artist and he's been showing quietly around Houston for years. These are uh, graphite on paper. Um, Brandon Zuck has seen the show. He, he really likes it. He really likes the black and white graphite pieces. The, the, mm -hmm. There's also some really nice color pieces. Or what he's doing is a kind of cheerful overlay of very, very dark, uh, foreboding warning about death, about bad things happening in the world. There's a cheerfulness, but that's misleading. There's a kind of a darker content underneath. Interesting artist for sure. He doesn't always do graphite. This is uh, he does paintings. He does sculpture. He does video. Um, this just happens to be a drawing show. In Fort Worth this week, this is number three. It is at the Fort Worth Community Arts Center, which is the big uh, building that used to be the Fort Worth Modern before the Fort Worth Modern uh, became what we know now. But this is a big building. They often have more than one show at a time. This show's been up for a little bit. It's uh, curated by a collective called Latino Hustle, a, a Fort Worth collective. The show is called Aki Ahora, which means uh, here, now. And it's a group show. Um, it's Sarah Cordona, Francisco Alvarado, uh, Jeffrey Valadez, Melissa Gomez Herrera, Giovanni Valderas, who you hear about a lot on Glass Tire, and Fabiola Valenzuela. This Saturday, there's a discussion in, in the galleries from 2 to 4 p.m. with the artists with Latino Hustle. Uh, show up this Saturday in Fort Worth for that discussion, and then the show comes down the week after that. So uh, number two is uh, two shows at Colab Projects in Austin, which is great. So Colab was one of my favorite spaces in Austin, and they have this amazing uh, gallery space in downtown Austin, which of course they lost because it was way too expensive for a fairly, you know, challenging and experiment, uh, experimental gallery space to hold on to something like that, given what Austin is right now in terms of prices and everything else. So they were kind of away for a while, but continued to sort of sponsor events and everything. But now they're back and they have two spaces. So they have a gallery in this new complex on Springdale. And then they have uh, this parcel of land on Glissman, which is very close. Both of these are on the east side. Springdale location, they have a new show that I haven't seen yet, but it looks great by Sean Ripple and where he uses uh, cell phone videos and kind of degrades them like through the lossy process where they lose resolution and information and so there's kind of this transitional decay of these six second video clips over the last three years that he made using his cell phone and and uh just kind of capturing various things and instagram videos and that's going to be projected on the wall and also there'll be performances by sean ripple i think some of them involving the fuse box festival which we're going to talk about in a second at the parcel of land which eventually the plan is for to build a gallery complex and residency spaces and all this stuff for collabs. But currently, 
uh, Collab has partnered with a collective called Partial Shade that does outdoor installations, and they have a really great piece right now by an artist, Annika Todd uh, Catterfield, um, called Grounded in Culver, that I like a lot, and I think it's a really uh, striking and um, kind of mesmerizing outdoor installation. Here, so. Yeah, it's nice that they bought this piece of land, so this is going to be really theirs. And, um, and yeah, as, yeah. As Austin continues to develop, this they'll get to keep this. So you know, Austin continues to become more and more expensive and more difficult, kind of for creative people to have studio spaces, to have exhibition spaces, and things like that, and so. You know, really hats off to Colab for, you know, persevering in Austin and making it happen. Well, that brings us to number one, which is the 15th annual Fusebox Festival in Austin. Uh, as Neil just mentioned, Sean Ripple, who's got his show up called Lossy Process at uh, Colab, will be performing as part of this. Fusebox is an annual performing arts festival. It's big. It's free through an initiative called Free Range Art. There are things happening all over the city. It's already started by the time you see this video, but a lot of it heats up Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and Sunday. There's a ton of stuff happening Friday and Saturday, especially all over the city. And it's like 60 artists and art collectives, uh, including some locals like Sean Ripple, Roberto Jackson Harrington is going to be part of it. We've got uh, the Rude Mechs, which is just an incredible theater company in Austin. They've been at it forever, and they do consistently awesome stuff. The Color Condition is going to be down from Dallas, but uh, also it's international. There'll be artists coming in from Norway and elsewhere, but go to the website and check it out because it's just, it's chock-a-block. I mean, it's a really a lot of stuff. Yeah, it's great. And uh, Fusebox, kind of like No Idea Festival and a few other things in Austin, really kind of keep the flag going of Keep Austin Weird. You know, this is really out there, uncompromising, interesting stuff. And it's, you know, it's awesome that it's still happening, you know, in Austin and just absolute salute to the people that put it on and everyone that participates in it because, you know, it's the good fight and it is, you know, one of the things that's keeping Austin weird. 